Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Reformation Sunday. Thank you so much to Michael and Jan for that beautiful prelude to get us started with our worship this morning. You all look fantastic in red, so thanks be to God that uh, we have some people in red here today. Um, We're not going to pinch you if you didn't wear red, because um, the Reformation in part is about the rediscovery of God's grace and then extending it to others. Um, Red is not worn because it's Martin Luther's favorite color. I hope we're clear about that, right? Um, We wear red because red is the the color in the church that we use to symbolize the work of the Holy Spirit. And we um, understand that what happened in the time of the Reformation was an outpouring of the Spirit through the Reformers. Uh, We know that the Spirit works in mysterious ways, but the Spirit works especially through the Word of God. Martin Luther famously said that while uh, he and Philip and Amsdorf were sitting around drinking Wittenberg beer, the word of God was what reformed the church. So we gather to celebrate the spirit, we gather to celebrate the word of God. I'm glad that you're all here on this festive Sunday to do just that. We also have our quilts out, which adds to the color and festivity of this day. We'll be blessing our quilts for Lutheran World Relief uh, later on this morning. We do begin our worship by confessing our sin and hearing God's word of forgiveness, and so I invite you to stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Dear friends, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our gathering hymn. Fortress is our God, a sword and shield victorious. He breaks the cruel oppressor's rod and wins salvation glorious. The old satanic foe has sworn to work us woe with craft and dreadful might he arms himself to fight on earth he has no equal no strength of ours can match his might we would be lost, rejected. But now a champion comes to fight, whom God himself elected. You 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will to all. Lord, we praise your name on high, worship you and glorify. To the Lamb of God we cry and join the angel song.
Let us pray together. Almighty God, gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in all temptations. Defend against their enemies and bestow on the church your saving peace through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading from Jeremiah chapter 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their inequity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 46, please read responsibly. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and regard the works of the Lord. What desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow, shatters the spear, and burns the shields with fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The second reading from Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? Is it excluded? By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you're able.
God's holy word, for the words of forgiveness, the words that endure. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give praise to the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The Son has a place there forever. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please please be seated. And at this time, I'd like to invite the children up front while the rest of us sing. Raindrops, oceans, lakes, Good morning, girls. Welcome, children of God. I'm glad that you're here this morning. You might be wondering what's going on here today with all the red and um, this uh, special Sunday in the church here, because it's also another holiday, right? It's Halloween. You guys have plans for tonight? You're going to have some fun tonight? Good. So you might be wondering, well, what the heck? There's something different here going on at church. We're not doing orange or jack-o'-lanterns or or, um, costumes or anything. Instead, we're all in red and talking about Reformation, right? So I want to talk to you a little bit about what this Sunday is all about. And to help me do that, I brought some Play-Doh. Do kids still play with Play-Doh? Oh, good. I'm so glad. I would be crushed if that were ever to not be a thing. So I'm play- the thing about, um, that's nice about Play-Doh is that you can form it and reform it and form it and reform it again and again, right? And you can see I'm forming something right now even as I'm talking. And what did I make here? Yeah, it's a cross. Of course, the pastor would make a cross, right? (laughs) So the church, the people of God, are always supposed to be pointing to the cross. We're always to be pointing to God's love. The cross is a symbol of God's love, a sign of God's love. We're always to be pointing to the truth of the cross and the truth of God's word, right? So that's what our mission is, but sometimes... We get distracted, and sometimes people want to focus on other stuff, and um, the cross gets kind of hidden, and the church gets kind of deformed, right? See, I've deformed this cross now. Do you see a cross now? It's just kind of a, a lump. Well, yeah, behind me, but I'm, I mean right here in the, in, the, in the Play-Doh. So sometimes we lose our focus on the cross. We lose our focus on God's truth and God's love, and people can't see the cross anymore. It's a blob now. You're right, Abby. It's very much a blob. And so periodically, the church, every once in a while, the church needs to be reformed, right? This happened in a big way 500 years ago when someone named Martin Luther, you probably heard that name before, someone named Martin Luther and other people too. We should give credit where credit is due. There was a guy named Philip Melanchthon who was really important and uh, plenty of others. Katerina von Bora, Martin Luther's wife, she was fantastic and very important too. But Martin Luther and his friends and his wife, they set out about the job of reforming the church so that people could see this again, so they could see God's love, 
so they could see what God had done for them in Jesus on the cross, so they could see and hear the truth of God's word. Every once in a while, the church needs to be reformed. Maybe even every Sunday, as we regather, we all need to be reformed so that we know the truth of God's love for us. We come back again and again so that our hearts would be reformed. Because all through the week, they get banged up and distracted, and we need to be reformed in the cross, reformed in God's love for us. So I know it's Halloween, and I know you're probably pretty excited about that, and there's probably some treats in the future for you later today, right? Yeah, yeah. But this morning, we learn of something even sweeter than Halloween candy. This morning, there's no tricks and nothing to be afraid of. There's only the good news of what God has done for us in Jesus. God is reforming our hearts to hear that good news even now. Dear Lord, we thank you for Martin Luther and Katie Von Bora and Philip Melanchthon and all the people throughout history who have reformed your church so that we might focus on Jesus and his great love for us. We pray that your spirit would be richly upon us today through your word, that our hearts would be reformed as well, so that we would live every day, not in fear, but in the confidence and joy of your love and forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up, you guys. Have a great day today. Wanna play with this? Go ahead. Maybe you gotta put it back in there for me, maybe. <laughs> Thank you. I gave Mr. Carey the Play-Doh so he'd have something to do now during this. <clears throat> Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If you continue in my word, Jesus said, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Martin Luther continued in God's word as a monk and as a scholar. He had the privilege of studying God's written word at a time when many people didn't have access to Bibles. They didn't have access to the scriptures. The printing press was still a very new technology. And so there just weren't that many copies of the Bible. It hadn't been mass produced yet. So there weren't very many copies uh, around. But Luther got his hands on a copy of the scriptures. He was invited to be a scholar in residence and study the, study the word. And the more he continued in the word, as Jesus says today, the more he continued in that word, the more he discovered that the truth he found there in the Bible did not align with what was being taught and practiced in the church of his day. And so on this very day, October 31st, I just love it when Reformation Sunday actually falls on the 31st, the actual day. It was on this day exactly 504 years ago that Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to the door of the Castle Church in Wittenberg. Luther wanted to start a conversation about the truth that he had found there in the Scriptures. He had 95 debating points, 95 truth claims gleaned from Scripture that he wanted to discuss so that the church could get back to the truth he found there. And by posting it on All Hallows' Eve, right before everybody would come pouring in for the very, back then, very well-attended All Saints' Day services, by posting it then, it was very strategic, he guaranteed that a lot of people would see those theses. That, that statement. Well, lots of people saw it, all right. Martin Luther's call to the church to return to the truths found in God's word unleashed a firestorm. Luther was eventually branded a heretic and an outlaw. Long before anybody ever heard about cancel culture, they tried to cancel Martin Luther. They burned his books. He was excommunicated from the church. There was a bounty on his head such that he was hunted. People could hunt him down and kill him and be rewarded financially for it, making it necessary for Luther to go into hiding for nearly a year. Martin Luther unwittingly unleashed a fierce battle for the truth. 
On one side, you have the medieval church. The medieval church believed that they had the authority over what, to, what was the truth to determine what the truth was simply because they were the church. For the medieval church, truth was whatever advanced their purposes. The truth was whatever lined their pockets. And so, for instance, the forgiveness of sins was not something that was proclaimed freely in Jesus' name according to Jesus' clear command in Scripture. Instead, forgiveness was something that was sold in order to pay for St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. I think most of us know this part of the story pretty well. But what you might not know is that once the Reformation was underway, we also had a group of people called the enthusiasts. The enthusiasts believed that the truth was whatever they felt it was. They claimed a direct revelation from God apart from the scriptures. And so the truth, according to the enthusiasts, was whatever they felt it was. It was based on their feelings. Once Martin Luther opened up this Pandora's box of reform, these enthusiasts felt empowered to advance their versions of the truth. And so the Reformation was quickly a time of great confusion about what the truth actually was. Does this sound at all familiar to you? Can you see any parallels to our own time? We too live in a time of widespread confusion about what the truth is, where the truth can be found, what truths we should live our lives by. We too live in a time of changing technology. Like the printing press 500 years ago, the internet is changing the conversation about the truth in ways both good and bad. On the one hand, the internet has made the lies that uh, major media institutions, long seen as authoritative, they can no longer uh, slant their news unchallenged, right? That's a good thing. But on the other hand, the internet has created a platform for a million new liars, right? Anybody with a phone can be a news broadcaster or a podcaster. And so there is a battle for information raging in our own time. There is a battle for truth. There are so many different spins and slants on information that people feel like they can just pick and choose whatever version resonates with them, whatever version their preferred news channel says or whatever their preferred website or podcaster says. It's usually the version of the truth that allows them to do whatever they wanted to do in the first place. Some see the truth whatever advances their agenda or their power. Others see the truth as being whatever their feelings tell them it is, and, and the result, the result is chaos and conflict and confusion. But Jesus says to us, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. As Martin Luther battled both the authoritarians in the medieval church on the one hand and the enthusiasts on the other hand, he called both groups back to the truth that he found in God's written word. The scriptures, Luther taught, proclaims God's word of law and gospel, God's word of command and promise. As such, God's word contains a truth that is both good news and bad news for us. We have in these classic texts before us on Reformation Sunday uh, passages that clearly are bad news in some ways, right? In our first reading, we heard from Jeremiah clearly says that we as God's people have broken the covenant God made with us. In the second reading from Romans, St. Paul famously says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In our gospel reading, Jesus says that those who commit sin are slaves to sin and don't have a permanent place in the household. This is bad news, right? The scriptures tell the truth about us. They tell the truth about our situation. They tell the truth about our fallen human nature. So there's bad news there. 
But thankfully, there is good news, too. And this is what made Martin Luther so excited. This is what made him feel like he was born anew and and set free. There's good news all over these same passages. In the first reading, Jeremiah also says that a day will come when God will forgive our iniquity and remember our sin no more. In the second reading from Romans, St. Paul says that sinners are now made right with God through Jesus. They couldn't do it on their own power or strength or morality or efforts. And so now they're made right with God through Jesus. They are justified by his grace as a gift received in faith. This is all good news. In our gospel reading, Jesus says that the Son has come to, to share with you the truth, the truth that will set you free so that you will no longer be slaves to sin, so that you will have a permanent place in the household, so that you will be free indeed. This freedom is not a freedom to go on pursuing our self-interests. Christian freedom, and this is so important and so misunderstood uh, in our day, Christian freedom is not a freedom to do whatever you want to do. As St. Paul so aptly puts it in Romans 6, you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of righteousness. We are freed from sin and death and freed for a life lived in relationship with God in joyful obedience to his will and in sacrificial love towards those around us. In a time of radically changing information technology and cultural upheaval, in a time of lingering pandemic and political turmoil, in a time of chaos and conflict and confusion, we will continue to fumble our way through various truth claims. We will probably continue to argue and disagree about what is true with a small t. But as Christians of the Reformation, we have a heritage that continues to call us back again and again to the capital T truth found in God's Word. It is this truth that we can hold on to in the midst of everything going on around us. It is this truth that unites us as God's people unless we let other things get in the way. It is this truth that we can all strive to live our lives by. It is this truth that we can share with a weary and confused and hurting world. As Christians of the Reformation, our heritage calls us to do exactly what Jesus calls us to do today, to continue in his word. That includes the written word of the Bible. It includes the proclaimed word in worship. It includes the the word that we eat and drink in the Lord's Supper, the, the word that is poured over us in holy baptism. We are to continue in this word. It is by continuing in Christ's word that we truly become his disciples. It is by continuing in Christ's word that we come to know the truth that makes us free. As we continue in this word, our lives are rooted then and anchored in the greatest truth of all. The truth that though we are indeed slaves to sin, by grace we have been given a place in God's household that begins now and continues forever. The truth that though we are indeed captive to our own self-centeredness, We are now justified by God's grace as a gift received through faith in Jesus. The truth that though we are in bondage to sin and unable to free ourselves, we have been set free by the Son. And if the Son makes us free, we are free indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand now as you're able as we sing our hymn of the day. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. Curse who by deceit or sword would wrest the kingdom from your son 
and bring to naught all he has done. Lord Jesus Christ, your power make known, for you are Lord of lords alone. Defend your holy church that we may sing your praise eternally. O Comforter of priceless worth, bring peace and unity on earth. Support us in our final strife and lead us out of death to life. And now let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And now let us pray for the church, the world, and for all people in any need. Please join me in prayer. Gracious Father, we pray for your holy church. Fill it with all truth and peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in need, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, exalt yourself among the nations and speak your holy word to the leaders of the world. Free those enslaved by oppression addiction, poverty, and sin. Guide all people to speak truthfully, to listen charitably, and to use our freedom to serve others and to live in joyful obedience to your will. Lord, in your mercy, we long for you to break the bow, shatter the spear, and make war to cease throughout the world. Until that day, direct and strengthen all who take up arms in defense of life and liberty. Be their very present help in times of trouble and places of danger. Prosper all they do that accomplishes your will. Bring them home safely and soon. Lord, in your mercy. God, our refuge and strength, be with those who are sick or grieving, dying, or in despair. Help them to be still and know that you are near. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, giver of life, we lift up to you those in our congregation who are celebrating birthdays this week, including Alan Parker, Steve Ellis, and Dave Peaty, who is celebrating his 70th birthday today. We give thanks for each of these brothers in Christ, and with them we rejoice in your gift of life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your word you command that marriage be held in honor by all. We honor those in our congregation who are celebrating wedding anniversaries this week, including Walt and Esther Herlevy, and Dave Myers and Sheila Ryan. Continue to bind these couples together joyfully as one. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, in this time of chaos and conflict and confusion, keep us steadfast in your word. 
in a world that is constantly arguing about what is true. Make us bold to share the truth of your word so that all would be made truly free by your saving love. Lord, in your mercy, we lift up our prayers to you, O God, trusting your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you now to share a sign of God's peace with one another. Right, friends. You can go up your seat, <clears throat> a few announcements to share before we continue. Some stuff coming up this uh, this week. This coming Saturday, the Lydia Circle invites you to their holiday bazaar that will be happening from nine until three this coming Saturday, November sixth. Uh, super excited about that. I know they're going to do a great job. They did last year, and I know they're going to do a great job this year as well. Next Sunday is All Saints Sunday, and so we are going to be having our Luminaria walk. That will happen in the evening from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. Weather permitting, it will be outside. If weather does not cooperate, there are alternate plans to have it uh, spread out safely uh, indoors. So it's going to happen rain or shine, just a matter of whether it will be inside or outside. Uh, That's, again, next Sunday from 6 until 8. Uh, We invite you to contribute a bag that will have a candle placed in it for the Luminaria Walk. Uh, You can... Uh, decorate it in honor of different saints in your lives who are uh, departed from us, uh, but in the church triumphant. We celebrate them next Sunday. So uh, you can put pictures on there or just names or drawings or whatever uh, you would like. Those bags are available in the narthex, and they need to be brought back by, what, noon on next Sunday? Is that what I'm asking Beth? Uh, she's coordinating that. So if you could bring them back by next Sunday at noon, that gives plenty of time for them to uh, be processed and organized for the Luminaria Walk that evening. I'm going to be gone again next weekend from Friday until Monday, a little bit, uh, little bit longer. Uh, I am using s- Sundays that I didn't use in the summer, so you can't be mad at me. There's, these are Sundays that, that are mine uh, to be gone. Uh, we didn't uh, do a lot of traveling last uh, summer in order to be able to take these uh, fall trips uh, to see our kids in college. This time we're going down to Texas to see our son who is in his second year at Texas A&M. Um, his birthday is just uh, coming up. He's going to be 20 years old in just a few days. I can't believe it. Uh, and Luke is not coming home for Thanksgiving, so we wanted to make sure that we got down to, to see him. Uh, please know I do feel very conflicted. I, I feel very guilty and bad about not being here on All Saints Sunday. It's always a very special Sunday in the life of a congregation. Um, and there are some names on the list this year of those who've died in the past year that are very, very precious to me. Uh, So I do regret not being here. It's just the way that the timing uh, worked out for us to be gone. Uh, But I do have you in very good hands. Pastor Lori Johnson, who used to serve as an associate pastor here and herself knows many of the people who are on that list or knew them, uh, she will be preaching and leading worship um, this next Sunday. Uh, Pastor Lori just recently moved back to Whidbey Island and is uh, doing uh, hospice care through Whidbey Health. uh, And her tremendous gifts in that area, she's going to be drawing on those Uh, for All Saints Sunday. So I think she's a perfect uh, fit uh, for being here next Sunday. So I commend you all to her uh, good care next week. The insert has a lot of uh, other announcements there. I hope that you'll take a look at that and the connection cards. I think everybody here knows what to do with those. I'm going to switch mics and come down. I guess it's already on. Come down here because before we move into our offering... We have a special offering today of the Lutheran World Relief Quilts. Uh, We have a dedicated group of people who have really struggled to produce. You'll notice there are fewer quilts than there there have been in some years, but there's still quite a wonderful um, array of quilts that have been put together. 
they've lost some members um, who have uh, helped in the past. And then COVID shut everything down for a long, long time. <laughs> they've only recently been uh, producing these quilts again, but they've done a fabulous job of making sure that this ministry continues and you see the fruits of their labors here today. These will all be boxed up this week and then sent down to Seattle. I think Mike, Mike Dilly, are you, are you taking them down on Friday? All right, thank you so much for that. So Mike's going to take them down to Seattle on Friday where they will be loaded onto a truck and um, eventually make their way to Lutheran World Relief Headquarters in Maryland uh, and then dispersed all over the world to people in need. So before we box them up and send them off, I invite you to lay hands on one nearby. You should be within arm's length of, of one or another. Yeah, thanks, Natalie, for getting that one blessed. And uh, thanks, Paul. And I invite you to join me as we pray over these quilts. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all those faithful servants who have worked so hard to produce these, these quilts. Uh, their hands have been diligent and skilled in producing these beautiful works of art, which are offerings to you today. We pray that as uh, those same hands pack these quilts up and send them off, uh, that you would carry that blessing with these quilts and that you would bless the hands that receive them. Some will use these as a shelter from the sun. Uh, some will use them to keep warm at night. Uh, all of them will receive them with joy and this uh, splash of, of color and this sign of your love. May it be received as a sign that they are not forgotten, but are deeply and dearly loved by you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for praying with me, and we will continue now with the other offering. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <clears throat> holy, holy, God of power almighty, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. 
Dear friends, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now let us pray together using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus comes to us now through bread and wine to renew us in his grace. Come, for all is ready. Please be seated. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. 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 This is the body of Christ given for you, Sean. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. 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 This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Mike. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Peg. The body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Abby. 
you are a beloved child of God. Rejoice and be glad. The body of Christ given for you. Alice, you are a precious child of God. Rejoice and be glad. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Dottie. It's the body of Christ given for you, Jean. body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Tracy. This is the body of Christ given for you, Kyle. The body of Christ given for you. Stack those back up, please. The body of Christ given for you, Michael. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. A lot of Christ shed for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. stand. And now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace this day and always. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your son Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.